FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's October 23rd, 2017. Not much left of this year, that's for sure. But uh, we're starting out the week right with Andrew Hoffman. Andy, good morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning. I just, uh, I, I'm just looking at, I just quick look at Zero Hedge before just to see if something's happening. In my new world in, in cryptocurrency, which is 90%, I'd say 99% of what I do, Zero Hedge doesn't even matter. I look at these articles and I'm going, what? A, who cares about all this stuff? But then I see that even they, you know, I've, I've always criticized them for their terrible, terrible reporting on gold and gold manipulation. But then when I see Bitcoin tumbles after Saudi prince calls crypto Enron in the making, a yeah. Saudi prince is what you, they want you to think that people are listening to. It is so ridiculous, the, the uh, propaganda that goes out there uh, in a sector where Wall Street has missed the first $160 billion of market cap and, uh, and better get on soon so they get the next $160 billion. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess the Saudi princes can move the markets, right? Yes. He says, I don't even know which prince this is. And I put quotes around prince. You know, prince is like in fairy tales, not in real life. Uh, he says, this is Enron in the making. And I love when people say stuff like that, when they say terms like Ponzi scheme and, and pyramid scheme. I think the average person doesn't even know what a Ponzi scheme is. They just like to say it because it's like, oh, that's a fraud. It's a Ponzi scheme. No, a Ponzi scheme means an organization where people are being suckered in to put money in. Bitcoin is 100 percent decentralized. There is no organization at all. There's no CEO. There's no executives. There's no stock options. There is nothing. All you do is you buy it or you sell it based on your your discussion. There's no marketing group. Nothing. That's why it's so funny. They say this is Enron in the making. No, Saudi Arabia is Enron in the making because they base their, you know, hundred. They they base their uh, social budget on like one hundred and fifty dollar oil, and they got to figure out ways to get suckers to give them money to pay for the lifestyle of their people when oil is fifty dollars. Uh, not of their people, but of the ruling elite. All of those uh, members of the royal family, they have more members of the royal family than a small city. And they all are takers. They just want to keep getting more and more and more. And eventually it's got to come to an end. Yeah. And I mean, and, and in Saudi Arabia, of course, it's uh, the, the majority of the people don't even believe in like the religious sect of the government. They certainly don't believe in their political leanings toward like the United States. So it really is in some ways a Ponzi scheme because, I mean, you got to you got to figure out who's going to give you money to keep this this game going. And uh, but I don't want to talk about Saudi Arabia. I just think it's so comical that that they would think that Bitcoin would would ma and Bitcoin doesn't care about anything. You think it cares about what a Saudi prince says? <laughs> <laughs> hardly, hardly, hardly. So so what's going on? We broke six thousand on Bitcoin, and is it going to infinity here, Andy? Well, now we're in the 5700s. There's a lot going on this week. Um, there's going to be uh, a major hard fork tomorrow. A friendly hard fork in which people will simply uh, get what we call crypto dividends. Right now, the crypto dividend is trading at about, in the futures markets, like you know, 0.07 or 0.08 per Bitcoin, which is a lot of money. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then there's going to be a more contentious fork about a month from now, which I don't worry about, but it certainly will get a lot more uh, publicity. And you know, will it go to infinity? Uh, you know, I, look, I've written, and again, at Crypto Central, CryptoColdCentral.com, I've been in business six weeks now. I've written like 350 posts. So if you want to learn about cryptocurrency, you will learn it quickly. I talk about everything. And you really should just take the free seven-day trial and just read about these things. Uh, but, you know, I, I did write an article that said um, it, Bitcoin has the only uh, chance, the only asset that has a chance of making, getting to, say, a million dollars per coin uh, without hyperinflation. I mean, if gold ever did that. There's only one way that would occur. Uh, it could occur. It would certainly be a worst case scenario if the actual dollar hyperinflated, uh, meaning that everything hyperinflated first and no changes were made in the world. Because I think what will happen is if you had enough, if you have enough inflation, the world will just 
uh, you run into uh, cryptocurrencies. But I do think that Bitcoin could get to a million dollars per coin because I think cryptocurrency is changing the world. I think it's the aside from the Internet itself, which it's based on. Uh, it's the, the greatest technology that's uh, ever come, certainly to the monetary sphere and certainly the most impactful of our lifetimes. So it'll have a lot of ups and downs. Uh, but uh, right now, this year was the year that we really fought through a lot of the efforts to stop it between these contentious hard forks and uh, and the governments, the Chinese banning Bitcoin trading, which I assure you they'll turn around and, and unban at some point. It's just not working. Jamie Dunn, can you imagine if... Jamie Dimon came out and said gold was a scam, it would never come back because it's so helplessly manipulated. And frankly, people are becoming less interested in it uh, than they used to be. But uh, he, he calls yeah, Bitcoin a scam at $4,000 and a few weeks later at $6,000. Yeah. <laughs> How quickly, you know, like you say, I don't even think it's dog years. I think it's starting to move in mosquito years here, Andy. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. I, I call it double dog years. But yeah, mosquito years would be uh, like quadruple dog years or something. Yeah. I mean, I think a mosquito lives for uh, 12 hours. Is that right? Don't correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I'm not a, what do you call one of those bug guys, an entomologist? Uh, yeah. Hardly. But, uh, you know, it's nuts. I mean, this thing moves faster than anything I have ever seen ever. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the stock market is a boring uh, geriatric poker game compared to Bitcoin. All the financial yeah. markets compared to Bitcoin, it's like <laughs> it's like it's in a nursing home, the rest of the financial system, the, the yeah, pace that it, it moves at. Oh, yeah. And yet it's it's daily volatility is at an all time low. You wouldn't think it because it's constantly having, uh, you know, today alone, we've had a three hundred dollar swing and we've had them all weekend. But uh, the daily volatility is down to like four percent, which is the lowest it's ever been. Uh, you know, I mean, just two or three years ago, it was six or eight percent per day movement. So, you know, as it gets larger and larger, it becomes, as I say, anti volatile because more people are in it, more people are using it, adopting it. Uh, so it becomes, um, you know, le less and less volatile and, and more and more like mainstream. But it's funny because when you talk about it, I always say double dog years. I say it all the time. It's not just the price, the price. Uh, you know, wildly moving around. It is how, how the uh, the environment changes. I mean, we we're talking about just a few, just a month ago, the Chinese are banning it. It's the end of the world. Or Jamie Dimon says this, or just uh, it was just the end of July when we were terrified of hard forks before the Bcash fork, like it was going to end the world. And look where we are now at the point where we don't even care about the upcoming 2X fork, which is just a few weeks away. And when you look at the technology changes, I mean, no one thought Segwit would get in and uh, as, as recently as uh, July, as June, and then in July they they it got uh, it got act, well, it activated in August, but it was um, locked in in July. And uh, I just think that next year is going to be so shocking as to how much advancement we see. I'm not even talking about the price. I'm talking about the advancement in technology. The, the I, I think that the capital investment next year again. Forget Wall Street. Wall Street's going to be off the charts because Wall Street is now going to be, now that it's a $100 billion market cap, they're going to be heavily lobbying to get ETFs uh, put in place, and they will get them. But the technology investment we're going to see next year, now that SegWit is in, allowing for all these second layer technologies, is going to be like the dot-com boom of the late 90s. But it's going to be a lot more money uh, than, than the dot-com boom of the 1990s. Partly because of inflation and partly just because uh, of the complexity of the project. But it's uh, it's really, really exciting. And uh, double dog years won't even do justice to what I expect to come in the next few years. Yeah. Well, hey, so far, so good. So far, so good. And anything you see that can get in the way of this, Andy? No, uh, I see a lot of things that will try to get in this way. And there's certainly a lot of hurdles it must cross. I just don't think there's anything that's going to stop it. I think it's already reached a critical mass. Uh, as, as, we, as we got through the Bcash hard fork, it was proven that even a malicious hard fork is not going to split the network. I mean, yeah, you can create a new coin, as we call it an altcoin, but you're not going to break the network. You're not going to break its immutability. You're not going to break the proposition of 21 million Bitcoins. Uh, and once that's out of the way, uh, and the SegWit is out of the way, allowing for all these second layer of scaling. Um, you know, I mean, what's going to stop it? People will try. Uh, you know, the, the Saudi prince will try and Jamie Dimon and the Chinese government. And eventually the U.S. government will get scared enough and they'll do stuff. They'll close Coinbase. They'll 
create some uh, some capital controls or some some kind of thing. But it's the same kind of thing. Like uh, you know, I wrote that article what five years ago now called "Priceless Precious Metals Versus Worthless Dollars," where I basically say, look, the government doesn't do stuff like that unless it's already too late. I mean, the only way that they would that they the the U.S. government, the most powerful financial government in the world, with the world's reserve currency, would start attacking Bitcoin like the Chinese would be if Bitcoin was so high and had so much so much interest and the dollar was dramatically losing its value at that point well i mean i'll, I'll take my 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 contraband bitcoin but again how do you contraband it it's not owned by anyone it's impossible it's getting more anonymous each day and you know it's just a beautiful thing that's going to be volatile and it's going to continue to face hurdles but i think the hurdles are going to be increasingly uh less dangerous than the ones we've uh that we've had to deal with in the past and that's why the people who were in it early were rewarded because there were some some serious risks as early as as this year uh and the risks going forward i think are going to be a lot smaller than you know as far as the network itself than they were in the past you think so you think the risk is going to go down as the price goes up i mean usually it's isn't it the opposite andy I'm not talking about, well, first of all, not, there's a difference between the risk of the price going down. Obviously, the higher the price, the more it can go down. But I'm talking about the risk to the network. Because when I was oh, 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 early, yeah, sure. when I was worried that, you know, when it was $1,000, I mean, there were, I was terrified that some of these things would break it apart, some of these hard forks and the scaling debate, those kind of things. And you, and therefore, you, you, it, it's more vulnerable to anything if the Chinese wanted to, to, to destroy it or something. But now I think we've passed the point where those things are really risks anymore. So while they're still there, they're present, they're a lot less. And it would be, a, it would be, I think, almost impossible to actually break the system at this point, even though, of course, the price can go down for a variety of reasons. Right. Yeah, no, I, I agree. The more valuable it gets, the less susceptible to to sabotage or, or just utter destruction there is to it because it takes on, you know, it gets critical mass. And and that's really what it's about is achieving critical mass. Once you've got that, then like the saying goes, there's safety in numbers, right? Yeah. And again, Wall Street has not participated at all. I mean, it's almost there's almost no way. I love when I saw this article and it was reiterated the other day. Um, Bank of America did in September this uh, survey. They surveyed all their uh, I don't know clients and said, what's the most crowded trade? And the number one was long Bitcoin. I just had to laugh at that because you can't buy Bitcoin if you're a Wall Street institution, if you wanted to. I mean, you literally, you were not allowed to. There's no way that they'd ever let you buy an unregulated, quote, security, let alone on these shady exchanges. Even the best exchanges are shady. Yeah. And there's all kinds of hacks. I mean, Bitfinex was hacked last year. That's the biggest one. BTCE was one of the biggest one. It was shut down for money laundering a few months ago. So uh, and then a bunch of them are in China and all kinds of crazy places. And of course, you know, what we say with Bitcoin is you hold your private keys like you put it on a hardware wallet offline. There's no way a Wall Street institution like a hedge fund would be allowed to oh, buy Bitcoin for clients and hold it on like a thumb drive in their in their wallet in their. You well, know, so. well, in the uh, they can put all the thumb drives in the yeah. vault at J.P. Morgan Chase in, uh, at, you know, one Chase Plaza downtown right across the street from the federal reserve could you picture all those thumb drives stacked up in the yeah, vault, Andy? just <laughs> like uh just like they have all their clients gold that uh that the, or silver or whatever it is that they'll never let them have it uh so yeah that stuff's not happening that's why at a hundred billion dollar market cap they're going to make sure these uh these etfs get done and you know the, the big reason i think the etf was not approved it was back in i think july was because you had these uncertainties about the network. It could have split. And I mean, if you own Bitcoin in an ETF and it's the network splits, how do you even deal with ETF? But I think uh, people are starting to realize that that's not going to happen. Uh, there's this one more uh, contentious hard fork coming around November 19th called the Segwit 2X. Very malicious players, bad people. Uh, but, you know, obviously the network, the Bitcoin doesn't care. Look where its price is. And the futures market for that that coin, which is heavily hyped by these people, is only about 15 percent of Bitcoin. So I think once we just get through that, uh, that nasty little hard fork um, and people realize, yeah, there's no more hard fork fears ever, uh, then they'll get the ETFs approved. Then all of a sudden, you know, Wall Street is going to have a place where they are allowed to buy Bitcoin. 
uh, and it's going to be incredible. There'll also be other ones, uh, probably Ethereum and some other ones, but I don't really care about Ethereum or for the most part, I mean, you know, the only one I, I even own at all aside from Bitcoin is Litecoin, which basically was forked off of Bitcoin. It's the same kind of thing, but almost all is Bitcoin. So it's, you know, I think you're going to see just, you know, if, if everyone, people's looking, go, oh my God, look what Bitcoin has done this year. It's nothing compared to what's going to happen next year. And I'm not even just talking about the price. I'm talking about it is sweeping the planet. You look at all these draconian things going on. I see in Germany today, they uh, they put out a, a new law that that like mandates censuring of, of social websites. You see that in like Catalonia where they try to secede and the government comes in and wants to kill them all. The, I mean, people are just fed up with with what these central banks and governments are doing. And uh, and and as you know, the price goes up and it gets more recognition, especially when Wall Street uh, comes in and starts marketing it to get the price up so they can make money off it. You're going to see adoption uh, increase dramatically. And with all this technology innovation that we're going to see at the same time, it's going to be uh, 2018 is truly going to be uh, a, a year to remember, in my view. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, if it's anything like this year, forget about it, right? Uh, just so many different things happening on so many different fronts. But perhaps uh, the evolution of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies, the real ones, uh, are going to be the major the major achievement, accomplishment, or whatever you want to call it for 2017 and 2018. And and on that uh, topic, you said the real ones, and that's a good question. What are the real ones? Because if, for the most part, I don't think of, oh, I, there are very few I even consider actual cryptocurrencies, because unless you're truly decentralized and, and one person is not an attack vector or can't make decisions for the group, uh, it's not a cryptocurrency. It's just kind of a modern day tech stock and, and an even more risky one because they're for the oh, most yeah. part completely unregulated, traded on even you know more unregulated dangerous exchanges or, or in many cases they're traded over the counter. Uh, so yes, Bitcoin truly is a cryptocurrency because it has that factor. Litecoin has that as well. Very few others do. Ethereum certainly does not. Ripple certainly does not. Bitcoin Cash definitely does not and neither does Segwit2x. These are all highly centralized options operations, in many cases uh, run by people who do not have your best interests as opposed to Bitcoin, which is not run by anyone. It's the community's best interest that runs it. Right. Absolutely. Hey, so Andy, just tell us again uh, where we find your new site and uh, connect with you. Yeah, so exciting. Well, first of all, I'll talk about my Twitter handle because now I, I just hit 2,500 followers today after I've only had it for like six weeks. That's Andy underscore Hoffman underscore CG. And uh, of course, CryptoGoldCentral.com. I mean, come on. There are now like 350 posts in six weeks. And these, when I say posts, I mean, I'm writing short, but really, really impactful articles talking about Bitcoin, precious metals, not precious metals. I just talk about gold, but I would say 90 plus percent of what I'm talking about is Bitcoin and or other cryptocurrency. And uh, you can get a free seven day trial or you can subscribe for an entire year for just $225. It's a really good value. Just come over and try it. And you can always email me at ahoffman at cryptogoldcentral.com. All right. Hey, and any questions, comments, et cetera, email us kl at kerrylutz.com. And don't forget the Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz. Andy, we will talk to you again next week. Looking forward to it. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.